against the odds, we've won all these wars against the odds, we've built a country that you've seen. It's the most astonishing democracy. I mean, Iran is going completely nuts at the moment because they'd already faked these elections. They barred all the candidates except for four. They knew that all four of them were, were friends of the regime. One was a former prime minister. The wrong guy wins the election, and they, they don't know what the hell to do now. They go, oh my god, democracy actually kind of, we'd already rigged the elections, and yet they still turned out to be a, demo, a bit democratic, and the people actually are supporting the guy who won, and they don't believe us when we're lying to them and telling them that he, that he lost. And yet it's, 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 it's nuts. A little bit of opening to democracy, and it's threatening their regime. We in Israel have the most astonishing democracy, to the point where last week at a university in Haifa in the north, a, a, a Muslim leader, an Israeli Muslim leader, who's incredibly hostile to Israel, was insistently protected as he delivered his anti-Israeli speech at an Israeli university. I contrast that to a country like, I don't know, Canada, which couldn't ensure that our Prime Minister, Mr. Netanyahu, could give a speech at Concordia University a few years ago because there was Muslim opposition. Our democracy is phenomenal in this country. It's a phenomenal democracy in the most unhelpful, undemocratic region, uh, and it's something you should be incredibly proud of. This is a country that has brought Jews to safety from around the world, exactly as uh, was our national purpose, exactly as we would have done before the Holocaust if we'd been here. Right, today, the front page of my newspaper, three families from Yemen who were being persecuted in Yemen were brought to Israel, right, we're still doing it. Uh, lots of parts of Europe where Jews are feeling somewhat uncomfortable in the last few years, people have moved to Israel. Americans, fortunately, when they've moved to Israel in the last few years, have moved by choice, right, they've, they've not been forced out of America. You live in one of the very, very few countries in the world, and you should bear this in mind, one of the very few countries in the world where you can be fairly confident about the Jews having some kind of medium-term future that is not full of persecution and racism. In most countries of the world, that doesn't apply, and I'm certainly including lots of parts of, of Europe. The British Jewish community has declined by about a quarter or a third in the last few years. The mayor of London, the last mayor of London, was an anti-Semite and a racist, in my opinion, and the Jews did not have enough support, enough numbers to get rid of him. Ken Livingston is the guy's name. If he had been the mayor of Cleveland, believe me, you'd have kicked him out. There would have been a mass... Uh, um, angry response to some of the things he said, he would have been kicked out. British Jews don't have that kind of a strength. Right? So this country has taken in Jews from all over the world to the most astonishing uh, proportions. How many people live in the United States? 300 million people. Can you imagine if America in two, three years was asked to take in 60 million people? That's what we did here in 89, 1991, when we took in a million immigrants from the former Soviet Union. Basically a sixth of Israel, again, which is why you hear a fair amount of Russian in this country, one in six or one in seven Israelis is an immigrant from the former Soviet Union in the last uh, um, 20 years, most of them in the first three years of that period, and we absorbed them, and therefore you know, we have more symphony orchestras than any country in the world. You faint on a bus here, and somebody says they're a doctor, and half the bus stands up. Right? It's an incredibly well-educated, uh, fantastic immigrant. We didn't have natural resources here. We don't have oil. We don't have uh, um, 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 energy uh, resources here. Our main resource in Israel is brain power. Which country has more startup companies on NASDAQ than any other country in the world apart from the United States? Israel, right? We're at the forefront of biotech and high tech and so on. The country's phenomenal. People are even nice, I heard from you this morning. I didn't even know that. Uh, <laughs> the country's astonishing. And therefore, when people talk to you about the problems, you know, never lose track of that. Uh, briefly, journalism in Israel. By, by the way, does, does you being here mean some of you want to be journalists or not necessarily? No, no good, okay. Do you, you actually do want to be a journalist? Okay, very good. I mean, it's a very troubled profession at the moment, um, written journalism. Broadcast journalism is a little, is a little healthier. But, you know, globally, the economy is in trouble, and, and print journalism is in particular trouble because people are buying newspapers less and less, relying on the uh, internet more and more. On the internet, it's very hard to monetize. It's hard to bring money uh, uh, to fund your reporters and your editors off, off your website. And uh, Israeli journalism is no different. Israeli newspapers are in a little bit of trouble. The Jerusalem Post, my newspaper, uh, was actually liberated by the internet. And uh, if you can understand what I mean by that, um, this was an English language newspaper in Hebrew speaking Israel. Most English speakers who care about Israel live in the United States and live uh, abroad, cannot get the Daily Jerusalem Post. Along came the internet, and basically, now you can. You know, within minutes, you can read everything you're writing. And therefore, this paper that had an audience of a few tens of thousands became. Um, this incredible heavyweight we have, you know, three million unique users and rising 